Today I have the privilege of speaking with Don from Avalon Advanced Materials. How are you today, Don? Great, thanks. Don, you introduced me in 2008 to rare earths, and today I'm going to ask you the critical question here. Are rare earths back? It sure looks like it, Tracy. We're seeing lots of renewed interest in the uh, uh, rare earth space, and um, we knew it was just a matter of time. These things go through cycles, and we had that big burst of interest with the rare earth bubble back in 2008, 2012. But you knew at the time that it was uh, going to have another day because there was so much new technology being created with these rare earth elements. And the main application at the time that we talked about was rare earth magnets. And they're just getting bigger and bigger and more important in so many applications. And uh, that's creating pressure on the supply chain once again to meet the demands of new technology needing these rare earth magnets. So Don, let's start by talking about the Necholacho Rare Earths Deposit. You just recently put out a news release update. Can you tell us more about this? Yeah, so we had decided earlier this year when it started to become apparent that rare earths were coming back into focus again, that we should probably look at trying to reactivate the, uh, the project. And one thing we've kept in mind all along is while we looked at one specific zone on that property called the basal zone because of its uh, enrichment in the heavy rare earths that everyone was interested in at the time, it's not the only resource on the property. There are multiple zones there. And what we're realizing now is that we have a real opportunity to serve the specific needs of this emerging market for rare earth magnets that need specifically neodymium praseodymium. Other zones we have on this uh, property are enriched in the rare earth mineral bastnasite, right at surface, easy to access, and have exceptionally high content of those two critical rare earth elements now. So we're looking at the opportunity to um, uh, focus on developing some of these zones in the short term at a modest scale to start serving that, uh, that market by taking advantage of new process technology using ore sorting. We have over the years, Don, discussed how rare earths can also be referred to as technology metals or critical materials. And with everything that is in the news right now with regards to sustainability, do you see this being a variable in driving prices up with rare earths presently? I think it's all about technology creating more and more demand going forward. And um, that's what's happening with rare earths. It's happening with a, a lot of the, uh, critical materials that we're involved in. And I think increasingly uh, it's about getting involved in the downstream and understanding these downstream applications and starting to work with the developers of the technology and partnering with them on finding solutions that create the supply and help them in finding ultimately the best markets and properties for the uh, materials that they're creating using these uh, rare elements. So Don, where are you going next with this project? Well, since we put that news release out, we've actually had quite a few expressions of interest from different groups asking us uh, if they can help us uh, move it along, recognizing that um, there is um, a potential supply chain issue here, shortage of supply of these critical uh, magnet rarers. And so we're now looking at possibilities on how we can work with um, partners on this to get it going on the model where we've created around small scale development. Keep it small and simple. Uh, followers of Avalon remember that everybody in those days was looking at scale where you're looking at a billion dollar capex or more and that was one of the challenges at the time and getting into the rare earth business was the huge capital expenditure required to get started because of the multiple process steps. But we think we can keep it really small and simple by taking advantage of ore sorting technology that allows you to make a concentrate of a rare earth mineral called bastnasite that for which there's a market. And all it is is crush, grind, ore sort, product, ship and we think we can uh, potentially get into production on a small scale, start making money for 
a $10 million capital investment as opposed to a billion dollar capital investment. And these days you want to start at a modest scale and provide for opportunities to grow your production over time as you introduce your product to the market and um, see more opportunities to serve other markets. Don, as always, thank you for joining us today. My pleasure.